What's up my comic comrades? A while back we told you we were going to start covering some of the pulp characters in the world of fiction, and we kicked that off in September by giving you the history of the Phantom. If you haven't watched that episode, be sure to do so right here. In any case, today we're talking about the one and only Dick Tracy. It's a character not many people know much about besides what they know from his 1990 film, and say what you will about that movie, I loved it growing up. I still love it because nostalgia is a strong thing. In any case, let's see how this character got a start. It ultimately made his big screen debut in 1990 as one of the first characters from the world of comic strips and comics to get a big budget movie. Dick Tracy was created by Chester Gould and first hit the pages of a comic strip on Sunday, October 4th in the year of 1931, inside of the Detroit Mirror, which was a newspaper distributed by the Chicago Tribune New York Times Syndicate. Gould based the character off famous U.S. federal agent Elliot Ness. For those of you who don't know, Elliot Ness was an American prohibition agent who became famous for his efforts to bring down Al Capone and force prohibition in Chicago. He was a famous leader of the law enforcement agents from Chicago nicknamed the Untouchables, and I'm sure whether you know about the Untouchables or not, you've at least heard the name. In any case, with Ness the basis of Gould's character, he then came up with the name Plain Clothes Tracy, and then sent the idea to Joseph Mandel Patterson. Patterson worked for the Chicago Tribune New York News Syndicate and basically handled their comic strip division. From there, Patterson suggested making a few changes, like changing the name Plain Clothes Tracy to the now famous Dick Tracy. Patterson also suggested the first storyline be about Tracy joining the police force after his girlfriend's father was murdered by a crook. Gould liked these ideas, so he agreed, and like I said a minute ago, Dick Tracy was then first published on October 4th in 1931 in the Chicago Tribune New York News Syndicate. And as you would guess, as the character is still super iconic, all these years later, Dick Tracy was a massive success. So popular, in fact, he soon started appearing in newspapers across the United States. Dick Tracy was even voted in 1937 the third favorite comic strip after Little Orphan Annie and Popeye. But of course, there's always haters out there, and some journalists attack Tracy thinking he was too violent. As Taylor Swift says, haters gonna hate, hate, hate. Come on, don't act like you guys don't get down on some T-Swift. Let's be real here. But on that note, there's Dick Tracy's real-world origin and creation. So now let's see what his origin is inside of the comic strips and comic books. Like most good origins, Dick Tracy's is based in tragedy, because in order to root for a hero, we need to be able to understand, care, and feel sympathetic for why he or she is doing what they're doing. And the easiest way to do that is with a tragedy occurring in that character's life. Point and case, the death of Bruce Wayne's parents, the death of Peter Parker's uncle, the death of Superman's parents and his planet, the death of Barry Allen's mother, and the death of Dick Grayson's parents. See what I'm saying here? What I'm saying is, more so than not, there's usually a death of a loved one that sets the hero down the path to fight injustice. And in Dick Tracy's case, it would be the death of his girlfriend's father. But, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm putting the cart before the horse, let's start from the beginning. Dick Tracy was born in 1909 on September 4th. Yeah, this guy would be well over a century old if he was real. As a child, Tracy would work at his father's dog kennels. When he became older, he would go to college where he studied such things as Russian. The language skills he learned in college would help him later on in life when he became a naval intelligence officer. Then when he was a full-blown man, Tracy would become a Navy driver in New York Harbor. But it doesn't end there, Tracy is a man of many traits and also taught scuba diving lessons at one point. But by the time the 1930s rolled around, Tracy got himself a gorgeous girlfriend named Tess Trueheart and was trying to live through life during the depression. Tracy fell head over heels for Tess, so much so he wanted to make her his wife. So one night he went to her parents' house for dinner, where Tracy was gonna announce his plans to marry her. But unfortunately, that night mobsters broke into the house, shooting Tess's father Emil and stealing a thousand dollars he had hidden upstairs. But it doesn't end there. The mobsters then knocked Dick Tracy out and took Tess. Obviously, Mrs. Trueheart was in a state of panic and shock, but once Tracy came to, he swore that he would find Tess and bring Emil's murder to justice. We later find out the mobsters turned out to be enforcers who worked for Big Boy, an incredibly powerful crime boss. At this point, the police chief recruited Tracy into the plainclothes unit. Tracy would then infiltrate Big Boy's operation, rescue his girlfriend, and bring down Big Boy. It's soon after this, Tracy would become the Dick Tracy we all know and love. He would marry Tess, then adopt an orphan who later called himself Dick Tracy Jr., and even get himself a partner, Pat Patton. Pat would help him solve countless crimes and fight a bunch of new villains for the first time, like Prune Face, Flat Top, Mumbles, and BB Eyes. But just like that, friends, we have the origin of Dick Tracy. So now, let's move on to story arcs and publication history. Dick Tracy was such a good police officer, he would go on adventures throughout the world. One of these adventures led him to Halifax, Canada, when Stooge Viller and Steve the Tramp followed Junior Tracy and his biological father, Hank Steele. Tracy would even be stranded for weeks on an island in the South Atlantic with a Scotland Yard police detective during an adventure that also took him to Cuba. What I'm trying to tell you here is that his story arcs took him all across the world. But it doesn't end there. By the time 1986 rolled around, Tracy was recruited by President Ronald Reagan to be part of the government exchange program where he went to Russia as an observer of their law enforcement with the KGB. Basically, the president 
Juana Tracy to see if there was any funny business going down. Tracy would even become involved in a number of cases in France and England. One of the coolest adventures around the world, though, is when Dick Tracy went on vacation to Europe with Tess, where they retraced the steps of famous detectives such as Sherlock Holmes, who was a real person in the world of Dick Tracy stories. But let's jump back a little bit to the 1960s. Like most characters in the world of fiction, they have to adapt to the real world, at least what's popular to consumers at that time. And the 1960s was all about space, meaning, of course, Dick Tracy had to adapt. So around this time, Tracy and his friends would have adventures on the moon, meeting characters like Moon Maid, the daughter of the leader of a race of humanoid people living in Moon Valley. But then the 1970s rolled around where it was all about disco, bell bottoms, hippies, and tie-dye. So Gould modernized Tracy, giving him longer hair and a mustache, and a hippie sidekick called Groovy Grove. It doesn't get much more 70s than that. Now, let's shift gears for a second and talk about Dick Tracy's comic books because he was primarily a comic strip, but his stories would eventually get adapted into actual comic books, pretty soon after his creation, actually. Tracy made his first comic book appearance in 1936 as one of the features in the first issue of Dell's popular comics. With that said, many of his first stories that appeared in comic book form were just reprints from his newspaper strip. They just reconfigured the strips to fit the pages of a comic book. Dick Tracy would remain a regular feature in popular comics through issue 21. But for those of you wondering what was the first comic book to feature Dick Tracy exclusively, that would be the Dick Tracy feature book, which was published in May of 1937 by David McKay Publications. Tracy would appear in several series throughout the 1930s, but it wasn't until 1948 that he was given his first regular comic book series, Dick Tracy Monthly. The series ran for 145 issues, which is pretty crazy. The first 24 issues were put out by Dell, but from issue 25 on, Harvey Comics picked up the title, continuing the same numbering, publishing the book until 1961. Dick Tracy Comics remained rather quiet after this, until 1986, when Blackthorn Publishing began a new monthly series also called Dick Tracy Monthly. But once issue 25 hit, it became a weekly series, now called Dick Tracy Weekly, that ran until issue 99. It was around this time that Disney produced a mini-series of three issues that tied in to the 1990 film, which again, I love oh so much. Said series was called True Hearts and Tommy Guns, drawn by Kyle Baker and edited by Len Wein. It should also be said that the third issue in this miniseries was a literally a direct adaptation of the film. So for those of you who love the Dick Tracy film like I did growing up, go read this series because it's in the same continuity as the film. With that said though, most recently IDW has acquired the rights to publish Dick Tracy comic books, such as the miniseries Dick Tracy Dead or Alive and Dick Tracy Forever. Both are four issue limited series that are basically love letters to the classic Dick Tracy, combining classic elements of the iconic detective, but also giving it a modern twist. What I'm saying is, if you love Dick Tracy, or are just curious about them, check out these books. On that note, it's time for Powers and Abilities. Dick Tracy is the most decorated police officer in America, and he's known for having killed the most criminals while on duty. And being the most decorated police officer in the country, he's a celebrity in his own right, having the same amount of fame and recognition as J. Edgar Hoover and Elliot Ness. Tracy is also known as the greatest detective of his time. His name was literally feared in the criminal underworld. Notice I said of his time, because Tracy is a period piece character. That also means while Tracy's tech and weapons were extremely advanced for him, by modern standards, maybe not so much. But again, we're talking about a character who is literally literally based during the mob era. So having stuff like a two-way wrist radio, a two-way wrist TV, and a two-way wrist computer were extremely high tech for Tracy, especially when his comic strips and comic books were first being published. Plus, come on, who didn't watch the Dick Tracy movie as a kid and was extremely jealous of his watch? Between him and the Power Rangers who had the wrist communicators, I was like, come on, I need one of these. I just want to like talk to my friends through a wrist walkie-talkie and watch TV and stuff. Enter the Apple Watch years later. What I'm saying is for his time, Tracy had cutting edge technology due to his friend, Diet Smith, who was a billionaire industrialist funding and creating all of his tech. And of course, being a law enforcement officer and detective, Tracy uses an array of guns, which he's extremely proficient with. In the end, Dick Tracy has no real superpowers or crazy abilities. He's just the ultimate police officer and detective. With that said, let's move on to reading recommendations. Definitely check out Dick Tracy Dead or Alive, Dick Tracy Forever, Dick Tracy The Colin Case Files Volume 1, and Dick Tracy Casebook Favorite Adventures 1931 to 1990. But also watch the 1990 film if you haven't already. And watch his live action TV series. Yeah, if you didn't know, Dick Tracy had a live action TV series that lasted from 1950 to 1951 on ABC. He even had a cartoon series that was produced from 1960 to 1961 by UPA. So check that out as well. That should be enough to get you all started. First up for the week of the 25th, we have Batman Beyond issue 49. To safely return to his own timeline, Batman Beyond will have to defeat the villain The Blank without being seen by his mentor, the world's greatest detective, Batman. Now we have Falcon and Winter Soldier issue five, a diner somewhere in Nevada inside a battle rages on, as Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes do their very best to take down the natural, the most gifted killer to emerge in years. Here we have Dark Knight's death metal multiverse who laughs issue one. The DC multiverse has been destroyed and the Batman who laughs has used his godlike power to create a new dark 
Multiverse, a collection of 52 evil worlds. And finally, we have Maestro issue four. Hulk fights Hercules and gets the upper hand, but not for long. Rick Jones attempts to intervene, but it's no longer clear whose side he should be on. Don't miss this pivotal moment as the Maestro's plans fall into place. And with that, my comic comrades, that brings today's episode to a close. But if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. As I always say, it helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.